Hello, it is Tuesday, April 12th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Tuesday puzzle, so something themed, but still fairly approachable, like yesterday's puzzle, we hope. And this edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Josh Lucas, David Innes, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to the four of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for helping make this series sustainable. It's uh, I, I do very much appreciate that. And thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. You can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. And backing at any level will get you access to all of the bonus video solves that have gone up on the Patreon feed to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And if you back at that benefactor level, you also get the daily solve. Let's check the crosses mug and um, that recognition, of course. Um, let's see what else. Oh, do subscribe to the channel if you've not yet done so. Thanks to everybody who has. It's nice to see those numbers have been going up uh, recently. So thank you. Um, helps people find this, I think. It's sort of a self-reinforcing process. All right, let's um, let's get on to today's puzzle. Um, this is, uh, as I said, a Tuesday puzzle. It's been constructed by Dan Schoenholtz, who's constructed a few dozen New York Times crosswords in the past, so fairly experienced constructor, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's get going. No need to waste any more time. A skunk's defense could well be its odor. I suppose that's a primary means of defense for a skunk. And well, 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 I could say, oh ho, well, well, well. A fizzing firework would be a dud, didn't, uh, didn't go off as intended. Encyclopedia volumes vis-a-vis -vis Wikipedia, e.g. Um, on paper or something? I'm not sure what that's getting at. So, encyclopedia volumes vis-a-vis -vis Wikipedia, e.g. I mean, encyclopedia volumes are alphabetical. Wikipedia isn't really organized by anything except for arbitrary tags and categories and search. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Deceptive trick could be a ruse. An Apple TV plus alternative. So Hulu is one of the streaming services. So that must be what this is. And they're long for an underdog. An underdog definitionally faces long odds. So what is this? Oh, oh encyclopedia volumes vis-a-vis -vis Wikipedia, e.g. So older or old fashioned or old world. I'm not sure. Old style, and it doesn't seem right. Temp job. Let's go. Let's just go back up to the. Let's start marching through the acrosses as normal. High school exam for short could be the PSAT, the practice SAT. Um, that comes up every once in a while on the crossword. It's not a standby, but it does come up. Old fashioned message message carriers could be pigeons. You could have carrier pigeons, and a South Asian wrap could be a serape, maybe. Let's check the crosses on that to be sure. No, no. Because Shakespeare villain who says, I am not what I am, this must be Iago. And coming up next, not sure. Petri dish filler could be agar. That's a sort of substrate you use in a Petri dish, right? To examine organisms or what have you. Steffi with seven Wimbledon titles. Oh, this came up in a crossword recently. Steffi Graf. Pretty sure Graf came up in it. I can't remember if it was on the public channel or one of the um, Patreon ones, but it certainly came up. Oh, maybe it's maybe it is Serape, but spelled differently. What about this? No, no. Oh, Sarong. That's sorry. That's what I was trying to think of. Sarong. Yes. So, uh, by the way, wrap meaning in this case meaning an article of clothing, not a, um, not a sort of wrapped, bre uh, you know, bread treat. Um, so, if you prevailed, you won. And temp job question mark. Temp job question mark. Not sure yet. What about this? Coming up next. Coming up next. To, I'm just not sure. Let's keep marching through the acrosses here. Reddish purple salad ingredient. Is it a, a beet? Beetroot? 
Small town, it could be, because a small town could be a burg informally. And so let's just try it and see. Driving force, question mark. One might take off a few marks. One might take off a few marks. An editor, maybe? Not really sure if that works entirely, so it might not be correct. Literature Nobelist Alice. Um, I'm sure I know this, and I'm probably being led down the wrong path by incorrect crosses. Um, <clears throat> church choir accompaniment organ, I suppose. And so a small town still could be a burg. Driving force. What might be heard in a herd? Mooing or lowing? Herd of cattle could be mooing or lowing. What was this again? Temp job, right? I'm still not sure about that. Necklace that could be made with cuckoo nuts. Is it a lay? Which often is made with flowers, but can it be made with these as well, perhaps? Slim and trim. I'm finding this much more challenging than a typical Tuesday puzzle. I must say, usually I can just march through this and not really need to stop much. Exact lookalike would be a twin, which probably means I should stop focusing on the things I'm not seeing, and I should just I should just keep going through and get get the things I can get because we'll get the other things with crosses. Temp job. It looks like meteor, doesn't it? Blank her pronouns. Uh, she her pronouns. And give this for that is to swap something. You give this thing for that thing. Lead into pad could be helipad, as in a helicopter landing site. Union job. A wedding singer, wedding planner. There we go. So you, so a union job. So the, this has a question mark, which means there's some kind of pun or wordplay going on. So um, a union it can be a, a wedding can be described as a union. So a job around that would be a wedding planner. And the question mark, the pun or wordplay indicates not to read this in the way we ordinarily would. So you'd read union job and you'd think, ah, it's a, it's a job that's been organized around a union. There's a labor union um, attached to this job. But no, in this case, we're thinking of a different meaning of union in order for the clue to make sense. Okay. It's encyclopedia volumes vis-a-vis -vis Wikipedia, e.g. old. Why do I not see what that is? It's very, very frustrating. Ones potentially contacted in first contact. Aliens. We make first contact with extraterrestrials, for instance. And clear up as ski goggles could be to defog them. La Vie en Rose singer Edith, Edith Piaf, the famous singer. Oh, old media. There we go. I had, I was really on the wrong track here because I kept trying to think of adjectives. Um, or even things like old world, which in that case would be used as an adjective. So you could say that was an old world method. Um, but it was a noun. Um, encyclopedia volumes are an example of old old media. So it's a good reminder not to get caught up in a particular part of speech when there could be another one that applies. So this is, this is meteor after all. Temp job. Meteor. What is it? Oh, I'm sorry. And coming up next, oh, to follow. Why didn't I see that before? It's coming up next. It's still to follow. It's coming up next. Slim and trim. Neat? Not sure how the slim fits into that. Vowel sound at the end of 15 and 26 across. Looks like long something. Vowel. Likely to offend in brief non-PC or not PC, perhaps. So this could be a T or an N. Watery or papery? Watery or papery? And then here we have end of a hairy limb. It could be a paw, a dog. It could have a hairy limb with a paw on the end. Works in a theater. Plays. So here works is, um, again, speaking of that part of speech distinction, uh, obviously, you'd read this and you would think, uh, ah, works at a theater. That person works at a theater. But it's actually referring to now, nouns, works, works that are performed at a theater, plays. And there's no there's no question mark indicating pun or wordplay here because it is, it is literally true 
you wouldn't necessarily, you wouldn't probably actually describe a wedding planner as a union job. It, it, it really conflicts with the sort of idiomatic meaning of the phrase union job in spoken English, but here works in a theater. It might be a bit confusing to say it that way, but it, but it's not, it's, it, you're not really abusing the meaning of any of the words here to, to, to create plays. And so that's why there's no question mark. I'm sure it's a gray area. And I think on more difficult days, they're more likely to simply leave the question mark out in general. But, but that's, that's why this one doesn't have one, whereas this one does. Okay, what was this? What maybe? Oh, right. What maybe heard in a herd? So it could be lowing or mooing. Now, lowing. Oh, meteorologist. So it's mooing. Now, what is this? Temp. Oh, tempest and temperature. I see. Okay. Uh, I don't know why that took me so long. So temperature job would be a meteorologist or someone who whose job deals with the weather, forecasting the weather. Driving for oh an engine yes is the force behind the automobile the vehicle the engine it it drives the the car forward prefix with liberal or conservative neoliberal and neoconservative are both um, political um, uh, pieces of terminology oh one might make oh Alice Monroe why did I not think of Alice Monroe that was driving me crazy I had the right person in my head I was sort of wasn't necessarily picturing what she looked like, but I was certainly conceptually had Alice Monroe in my head, but I could not, um, I couldn't place the, uh, the name. Anyway, uh, incredibly excellent Canadian short story author, Alice Monroe. She's uh, absolutely fantastic. Okay, Spanish for foolish and beet. So this looks like Tonto, Spanish for foolish, and reddish purple salad ingredient is after all a beet. Okay, so that whole area took me some time to sort out. I'm very annoyed about that Alice Monroe thing. Anyway, let's keep going. George Eliot and George Orwell, for two, are both pen names. And I can't bring to mind either of their original names, but I know they're both, they're certainly both pen names. George Eliot is actually buried a, a walk away from where I live in Highgate Cemetery here in North, North London. Um and I don't remember her original name, but it's written on her gravestone, um, which I've seen. Yiddish yikes would be oy vey, and bottleful in El um, pardon my <laughs> slightly dodgy French pronunciation, um, oh, now, I would think of wine as being vin, V-I-N, in French. Am I reading this wrong for some reason? I guess that's not... I guess this is Italian, actually, now that I look at it. Because in French, it would be restaurant. So vin, vino, I suppose. Sorry, I mistook the language there. America's Cup vessel. So America's Cup is a yachting race, I'm pretty sure. And flex job. Okay, so let's see. So we had, oh, these were all jobs. Right. I didn't notice that these were both jobs for some reason. So we had temp job, meteorologist, temperature job, union job, a wedding job, a wedding planner. And here we have flex job. So is this going to be something like, yes, yoga instructor, because it has to do with flexing and flexibility. So yoga instructor is the flex job. There we go. And to really prosper, to I don't know, get rich or something? I'm not sure. Blank Man, one of the Avengers. Well, even I'm not out of touch enough to know that Iron Man is one of the Avengers. A wonkish sort is a nerd. Like the opening of Mahler's Symphony No. 9. It must be in D, in the, in the key of D. I wouldn't have known that off the top of my head, certainly. But we got the most important part filled for us, which was the actual identity of the key in question, D. Have ambitions to would be aspire to. And the reason that to is parenthetical there is because it's indicating we're going to apply it both to the clue and the answer. So it's not just have ambitions to, it's also aspire to. So we could have left the two out entirely, and then we would have had had ambitions, matches, aspire. Um, and the, the two just makes it a little bit easier to sort of see how they both match up. It's, it's basically a little hint for us. 
Okay, it was once the world's fourth largest lake, the Aral Sea, which is shrinking. Um, so I suspect this is the answer because it is no longer that. Apple Store offerings, you could buy Macs, Macintosh computers at the Apple Store. And Olympian's sword would be an epe, the uh, sword, blunted sword used for fencing and that sort of thing. Some lab liquids could be sera, the plural of serum. So you could use a serum in a laboratory. The scruff of your neck is your nape, nape of your neck. And bullet with a trail would be a tracer. You could have a bullet tracer. And shared a meeting, for instance, could be ran a meeting. There was a, um, in, the, in Bill Watterson's comic, Calvin and Hobbes, the, uh, one of the principal characters, Calvin, had a sort of a private detective, I guess, alter ego named Tracer Bullet. I remember that. Anyway, school system with campuses in Buffalo and Binghamton. Uh, SUNY, I think, State University of New York, um, which is a system I've heard of. I probably wouldn't have pulled that out of a hat if I didn't have the crosses, but I did have the crosses, which is what's helpful about doing these crosswords. Okay. Dream job. Oh, dream job. A psychoanalyst. There we go. I'm catching on to how this works. So psycho, psychoanalyst, psychoanalyst is a dream job, a job that deals with the interpretation of dreams. And affirmative reply to understood. Yes, sir, maybe. Most abundant element in Earth's crust. It must be oxygen. Another thing I wouldn't have known off the top of my head, but with the crosses, it seems plausible. It sells, it's said. Sex sells, it's said. Although I heard recently that perhaps it doesn't, because it's actually in advertisements anyway, because it's distracting and can uh, people will remember the <laughs> sort of sex-related material more than the actual um, product being sold, which seems plausible to me. I don't know. I just that someone explained that to me recently. I don't know if it's true. Bad break in bowling. A spare. If you're bowling, you don't want a spare because that's. What does that mean? I don't remember what a spare means. Is that it takes two to knock down all the pins? I don't remember what a spare is. Sorry. Someone will tell me tomorrow, or today, and I'll read it tomorrow. It travels at nearly 300 million meters per second. Oh, no, sorry. It's no, no, sorry. It's not a spare. It's a split. It's a split. I was thinking of a split in my mind, and then I said spare. Then I thought, wait, that's not what a spare is. What's a spare? Anyway, I don't remember what a spare is exactly. I think it might be you... You knock down all the pins in two rolls. I don't know any of this terminology. I'm sorry. But a split is when you have pins that are uh, remaining after you've taken your, your shot. I guess, boy, I'm sorry. I'm really butchering this. And then you have, they're separated and uh, there's a gap in between them. And so it's very difficult to knock both of them over in one more go. Um, maybe understand is not yes, sir. Maybe it's yes, I do. Yes, okay. It travels at nearly 300 million meters per second is light, and spiced tea is chai, and then music is powered by ideas. Uh, quotation attributed to Yo-Yo Ma, that sounds plausible. And, oh, look at that, another literature nobelist, Morrison, Toni Morrison. So we had Alice Munro and Toni Morrison in the same puzzle. That's nice. Many a cocktail mixer is soda, and like scotch... Now, I don't know if this is referring to Scotch whiskey. Um, if it were, what would this be? Not sure. Fuzzy bit of car decor. You could have fuzzy dice hanging from the rearview mirror, classically. I wonder what the origin of that is. Story of one's life. An obit, an obituary. Um, after one has passed, there's an obituary that tells the story of your life in a newspaper. Rocks in a cocktail. Ice. Uh, so we have our soda and ice, which are both potential cocktail elements. Big name in online talks is TED. TED Talks. You see those on YouTube all the time. And oh, scotch. So it is scotch whiskey. Oh, look at that. So we have soda, aged scotch, and ice. You could have scotch and soda, or scotch on the rocks with ice. That's a nice little um, bit of bit of crosses there. Ah, so to really prosper is to hit it big and watery or paper. Oh, thin. So you could have, you could maybe um, 
overly dilute your aged scotch with soda, and it would be thin. It would be watery. It would be thin. And then papery, something that's papery skin, thin skin, for instance. So anyway, that, that disambiguates this non-PC or not PC, and it is not PC. There we go. All right. I did find that trickier than an average Tuesday, certainly. Um, I don't know why. I just did today. Um, had some things that, that were frustrating that <laughs> really wish I would have... Monroe should have come to mind instantly for me. It's frustrating that it didn't, but that happens sometimes. Um, I really... It is interesting doing... I, it's now been so long since I've done the New York Times Daily Crossword on my own without doing it on video. I mean, I think I've done it once. I think there was one day since I started this series, maybe, where I didn't record the Daily Crossword that day at all. Um, there have been a couple times when I released a substitute video, but then I went back and recorded a video on the day anyway. Um, but I think there was one day when I didn't. And other than that, uh, you know, I've only done them on, on these videos. And it really is a very different solving experience. I find my memory seems to work in different ways that probably has something to do with interacting with the narration that I'm that I'm doing. It probably changes the mode my my mind is in and makes it I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to blame anything on my my not thinking of Alice Monroe. It is just different. It is a different experience. It's 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 certainly noticeable uh, to me. And I think it does change how I access memories. But anyway, uh Let's look at the theme here. So we had a temp job, a temperature job of meteorologist, a union job, a wedding job, a wedding planner, a flex job, a flexible job, I suppose, a yoga instructor, and finally a dream job, a uh, dream analysis, psychoanalyst. And so we didn't have any kind of revealer that explained what was going on here. We just had the clues themselves, the clues and the answers themselves that created a theme. Um... And it worked quite well. And I was very, um, <laughs> I found it very mystifying at first. I, I, I sort of, I, th I appreciate these, this, sort, this sort of theme clue when there's almost nothing there. And it certainly just looks like a regular punny sort of clue. It doesn't, uh, some, some theme clues you can really tell are theme clues because it'll be a whole paragraph or something. It'll be something outrageous. Um, but these were just little subtle things. And in fact, after solving two of them, I still didn't notice the job commonality. So that was that's sort of funny. Anyway, uh, yeah, I did find this a little trickier than an average Tuesday. Let me know how you fared on that front. And I think we just have one clue from yesterday's puzzle to uh, to clarify or discuss. Yes, we do. But it contained two two different clarifications. So how about that? Dragon Traces explains... The lufa, lufa sponge, is the fibrous interior structure of a gourd of the same common name. So I was wrong. I don't know why I thought it was something from the sea, some kind of marine organism. I don't know. I was wrong on that front. So it's a gourd. A lufa gourd creates the lufa sponge. So thank you, Dragon Traces. Dragon Traces also corrects my improper pronunciation of Lee, L-E-A, which I think I said as lay, perhaps? L-E-A. Preferred pronunciation says Dragon Traces is Lee. And that refers to a meadow. That comes up in the crossword not, not infrequently. Um, and that was it. It was just that one that one comment uh, with those two clarifications. So thank you, Dragon Traces. Thank you to you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle and the solve in the video. And I'll be back tomorrow, of course, for the Wednesday puzzle. Um, Maybe a little bit of a step up in difficulty, or maybe about this, maybe about this level of difficulty. This felt like maybe a Wednesday-ish to me, but I don't know. It could have just been an off day for me. That certainly happens as well. Um, in any case, I hope you join me. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Bye.